Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to solve a conservation of momentum problem, but I'm going to set it up three different ways. The principle is going to be the same in all of them, or we're going to do basically the same calculations. I'm just showing you three different ways to organize the problem, and you can pick whichever one you kind of like the best. It makes the most sense to you. So in this case we have a physics teacher, they're throwing a dodgeball at a student. We see that in the before picture right here. The dodgeball is going to the right, the student's sitting on a skateboard so that there's low friction, and then after the collision, after the hit, the dodgeball bounces back to the left and the student is moving to the right on the skateboard there. So one way to set this up is by creating a table. And in my class, a lot of my students start with the table whenever they solve problems like this because we do a lab where they discover the conservation of momentum and it includes a data table like this. So a lot of my students start with this whenever they're solving these types of problems. Here's kind of the setup of that. We've got the before, we've got after. For each one, we're gonna write out MVP, so mass times velocity gives us the momentum. And we'll do that for the before, we'll do that for the after. So I'll divide the table up into MVP, and then I'll cross out a couple boxes because we don't really add the masses and add the velocities for this bottom row here. And then on the left side, I'll write out the different objects. We've got the ball, we've got the student, and then of course we have the ball and student system or the com for the combined momentum. Now doing it this way is a great way to organize it. The problem is it takes a little bit to set up this uh, whole table and everything. And so this might be kind of the longer method of all of these, but it works for a lot of students and it's a, it's a good way to organize it. So let's go through the problem and sub in the numbers that we know. It says a physics teacher throws a six kilogram dodgeball. A six kilogram dodgeball? Holy cow, that's like more than 12 pounds. That's like a bowling ball. This physics teacher throwed a bolt. Who wrote this problem? I feel really bad for the student now. Whoever this physics teacher probably needs to get fired. Okay, so six kilogram dodgeball, we're just gonna go with it, is thrown at 18 meters per second. So that's our velocity. I can multiply mass times velocity and get a momentum of 108, so I fill that in. And it hits a 52 kilogram student. That's the student's mass right here. The student who's initially at rest, great, so zero meters per second. And 52 times zero gives me a momentum of zero. And then of course I just add the momentum of the ball plus the momentum of the student, and that gives me the total system's momentum is 108. Now the masses of both objects are gonna stay the same, so I can go ahead and fill in my mass column right there, and we'll read the rest of the problem. After hitting the student, the dodgeball rebounds back left. Ooh, that's gonna be the negative direction, really important here, with a speed of five meters per second. So the velocity of the ball afterward is not gonna be five, it's gonna be negative five meters per second. And then the student's velocity, oh, we don't know yet. What do we know? Well, we can calculate the momentum of the ball afterwards. So we take negative five times six, gives us negative 30, that's the momentum there. But we don't know any of the rest of these just yet. Now, if you remember the idea though of conservation of momentum is that the total momentum of this two object system should stay the same from the beginning to the end or from before to after. So I know that this value right here, the total system momentum before, has to equal the value right here, the total system momentum after, so that also is 108. All right, from there, I can fill in the rest of the table. What value is gonna go here? Well, I know that negative 30 plus something gives me 108. Well, negative 30 plus 138 is gonna give me 108. I could also do 108 minus negative 30 to get that 138. Once I have my P, I know that P equals MV, so I could take P divided by M to get my velocity. I'll do that and I get 2.65 meters per second. That's gonna be the student's velocity on their skateboard after they get hit by this bowling ball dodgeball. Now there's one more thing I wanna point out on this. You can really easily find the change in momentum of the student and the ball from the data that we have here. Delta P, your change in momentum. I can look at the momentum of the ball. It went from 108 to negative 30. That's a change of minus 138. I could also see that the momentum of the student goes from zero to 138, that's an increase of 138, or plus 138. And so I know my change in momentum is 138 kilogram meters per second for the ball and for the student. In some problems, I may need to calculate the impulse or the F net or the duration of the collision. And so I know that the F net delta T equals the change in momentum. So I can quickly incorporate that into a problem like this if I need to calculate one of those things. So that's one way to set up a problem like this. Let's look at another way, another way that a lot of students kind of prefer. I'm gonna go through the same problem, but this time instead of creating a table, I'm just gonna label stuff like directly on my picture here. So I have a before picture, I have an after picture. All right, so the dodgeball is six kilograms, so I'm gonna label that there. And the velocity before is 18 meters per second, I'll label it there, not down here, because that's gonna be the after velocity. 
and six times 18, I get a momentum of 108. I'll do the same thing for the student before. The student's mass is 52. The velocity before was zero, and then 52 times zero gives me the momentum of zero. I can calculate the total momentum, which is 108 plus zero, and I get a total momentum of 108 kilogram meters per second. Here's where the conservation of momentum comes in. The total momentum before has to equal the total momentum after. I can see that the total momentum has to be 108 even after the collision has happened. Okay, let's write some more information that we know. We know that the mass of the ball is still six kilograms and it's rebounding back left five meters per second. So my velocity is negative five meters per second. Multiply those, I get momentum of negative 30. And I know the mass of the student afterward is still 52. I don't know the velocity, I don't know the momentum yet, but I can calculate the momentum of the student afterward pretty easily. I know that the total momentum is 108. The momentum of the ball afterward is negative 30. Negative 30 plus what gives me 108. As we saw in the last problem, it's 138 kilogram meters per second. That's the momentum of the student afterward. Then I could take the 138, divide by the 52, and I get a velocity of 2.65 meters per second, just like we got before. Another cool thing about this method is I can easily find that change in momentum for one individual object just as easily as I did with that table. I can see that the ball started with 108 kilogram meters per second of momentum and it went down to negative 30. That's going to be a change of negative 138. And you know that the student has to have the same change in momentum, but where one was negative, this one will be positive. And so that's plus 138 kilogram meters per second. So I can easily find the change in momentum of the individual objects just like we did with the table. Newton's third law, both objects feel the same force but in opposite directions. Well, this is a direct extension of that. They're gonna have the same change in momentum, just in opposite directions. This one negative, this one positive. All right, so what's the third way? The third way is for anybody who really likes algebra, they just wanna set up an equation and go for it, or if they just wanna get all the data down and then not have to like think too much right afterward. You can actually just set up one big equation and then solve for the variable that you want. Now, if that sounds terrible to you, then just don't use this method. But if you're like, oh, I could see myself doing that, I like some algebra, then this is a pretty good method that will get you to the answer pretty quickly. The big idea here is the conservation of momentum. We know that the total momentum before, so P total before, equals the total momentum after, and that's how we're gonna set up our equation. Momentum is mass times velocity, and so first we have the mass times velocity of both objects. So the ball, so we have the mass times velocity of the ball, plus the mass times velocity of the student, and these are both gonna be the momentum before, equals the mass times velocity of the ball after, plus the mass times velocity of the student after. So I've got four different MVs here. It's important that you stay organized here though. This is the ball, this is the student, and they're both before. This is the ball, this is the student, and they're both after. Now we'll just go through and substitute in all the values that we know from the problem. So the mass of the ball is six kilograms, the velocity of the ball is 18 meters per second in the positive direction. The mass of the student is 52, and the velocity before, remember, is zero. And that's gonna equal the total momentum after. So the mass of the ball is still six. The velocity of the ball after is negative five. Make sure you get that negative. I said that like three times in the video. It's really important though, and it's really easy to forget. So make sure you include that negative for anything moving in the negative direction in one of these problems. Plus, the mass of the student is 52, and the velocity of the student, we don't know yet. So we've got one variable that we're solving for, and we've got one equation for it. So let's see, six times 18 is 108, plus 52 times zero is zero, equals six times negative five is negative 30, plus 52V. Now, if you wanna find the change in momentum, like I showed you in the first two setups, it's important that you write it out like this, where you write out 108 plus zero, negative 30, and 52V. If you do that, you can find the change in momentum a little bit easier than if you just plug it all into your calculator like all at once. If you don't care about that, then you can just plug it into the calculator all at once. So now we'll just do some algebra. I've got a negative 30 over here, so I'm gonna add 30 to both sides. 108 plus 30 gives me 138, and I have 52V left over. I'll divide both sides by 52, and I get a velocity of 2.65 meters per second. And that 2.65 is in the positive direction, so we'll add that plus there. Now finding the change in momentum is a little bit tricky. You just have to know where to look for this. I know the momentum of the ball before is 108, and the momentum of the ball after is negative 30, that value right there. And so I can see that the ball's momentum went from 108 to negative 30. That's a change of negative 138 kilogram meters per second. So the change in momentum is that 138 kilogram meters per second, either positive or negative, depending on if you're looking at the ball 
or the student. So those are three different ways to set up a conservation of momentum problem. You've got the table, which is a great way to set it up if you're familiar with that. You have just writing it on the picture itself and organizing it that way if you've got a before picture and an after picture, or you could draw the picture yourself if it's not provided. And we've got the one big long equation method where we just say P total before equals P total after, and then you sub in all the values that you know and solve for the variable that you need. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, good luck applying conservation of momentum to some problems. And watch out for evil physics teachers throwing bowling balls at students on skateboards. It's dangerous to go to skate parks these days. You never know when somebody's going to throw a bowling ball at you. Stay safe out there.